Hi guys, welcome to Learn to Create Games. Today we look at nav mesh. We look at defining obstacles, manage NPCs, off mesh links, multiple NPCs, avoid obstacles, and jump across platforms. So let's get started. So first, what we will do is to start to importing assets. So in this case, we will be importing the characters assets, which includes first and third person controllers, and also the character that we'll be using for the AI. So again, you just need to click import on this window. It includes a list of assets, including characters, animations, and sound. So once this is done, a new folder will appear. Now we will actually import a new uh, set of assets for the cameras. If you remember well in the previous lesson, we used a camera to follow the third person controller around the environment. So again, we need these two different prefabs and we will import them accordingly. So once this is done, they should appear in the standard assets folder. So if I double click on it, you should see it, it includes at least the characters folder as well as the cameras folder. So we have those two, those two folders that will be, be able to use for this game. So next, I will create a cube that I will rescale on the X and Z axis. We have done that before. So again, something very simple by 100 on the X and 100 on the Z. So once this is done, we can also create a brand new material for this platform. So again, create and material. Again, something very simple. So we just create this brand new material, which is called green, and we, we can set its color later on. Now there is a big little change in my interface because I was in debug mode. So again, back to normal mode and set the color for this material. So again, we're going to pick a green color. And once this is done, we just need to apply this color to the actual surface of the platform. So when this is done, there are a few things we need to do. First, we need to add a third person controller. So again, we're going to go to third person controller, prefab, and drag and drop the third person controller. Once this is done, you can double click on this element in the hierarchy to ensure that it is just above the ground. So as we have added a third person controller, we need to add a camera that will follow this character. So again, look into the prefabs and look the free look camera rig. Take the free look camera rig. Once this is done, we need to set the target for this camera. So again, we just need to drag and drop this third person controller onto the target for this camera, which means that the camera will follow the third person controller. So if we play the scene, and move around using the arrow keys on the keyboard, we should be able to see it. Now, I just need to deactivate the default camera so that only the view from the free look camera rig is displayed. So it seems to be working. If my character moves right and left, the camera is actually following the character. So next, I will add a character that will be used for the AI. Okay, so using this prefab, it's a character that is similar to the one that is used for my third person controller. The only thing is that at the moment it will just not move yet, okay, because there is no AI associated. Even though I will add a target to this character, so again the target will be my third person controller, but as you will see, it will not work straight away. There is something else that I need to do in terms of the navigation. So if I play the scene, and although I have added the target, you should see that this character will just remain static. It will not move. Okay, if I move right and left, even if I go near this character, it will not try to go towards me. And this is because I need to set the navigation settings for uh, this character and for the scene. 
So again, I'm going to change the window and go to the navigation window. This window will take care of the nav mesh navigation. In other words, navigation for the artificial intelligence or the NPC. So again, I'm just renaming the floor. So I'm going to call it ground. And then what I will do is after selecting the ground, click navigation static, which means that it's going to be a static element. It will not move. And then I just need to bake my scene, which means that after baking my scene and saving it, the system will know that my artificial intelligence or my NPC will be able to navigate uh, and walk on this particular element, which is the ground. Okay, if you look at the option navigation area, you should see that it's written walkable. So again, the NPC should be able to walk on this scene. So it's going to take a few seconds. After that, you should see um, that it has been done. So the button called bake is actually not grayed out anymore. And if you play the scene, you should see now that my character will follow the third person controller. You can see that very easily right now. Okay, It's quite nice because this character is also animated. So again, it will actually just run as it's moving towards my character. So this is working fairly well for us at the moment. What we could add to this now is a new cube. And this cube will serve as an obstacle. So we just want to check that the actual NPC will avoid obstacles. So this box is reshaped, it's rescaled. And again, what we will do is move the both the NPCs and the third person controller and just try to see whether the NPC will actually go around this obstacle, this obstacle in order to go towards the player. So again, we just move the player a little bit and play the scene. So if you look at the scene, there's a small mistake here. And you might have guessed it, but I will tell you what it is. This box that we have added has not been added as an obstacle for navigation. So the character doesn't know it has to actually go around it. So again, I need to select this object again, click on navigation static to say that this element is static, and then click on bake again. So basically what we're saying is that this particular object is to be avoided. So again, if you don't specify it, the, the NPC will not try to avoid it and it will end up the exact same way as we've seen in the last few seconds. So again, it's something uh, that's good to see because it's a mistake that you know everyone could make. And again, as soon as I actually create this object and make it as an obstacle, now it's just easier and the NPC will actually go around the obstacle. So at this stage, this is working quite well. What I'm doing here is I'm duplicating my NPC. Okay, so I'm going to create about three different NPCs and put them at different locations. Just to show you, you can include multiple NPCs once you have set up the environment. What I'm doing as well is to duplicate some of the obstacles. Okay, and again, because they are duplicated, I may need to bake the scene again. Okay because I have new obstacles. So the system needs to perform a few more calculations so that the navigation for the NPCs is calculated accordingly. So again, we can create a very simple environment by moving and rotating the duplicates. And again, I'm going to click on, so again, make sure that navigation status is selected for all of those obstacles, and then click on Bake. Once this is done, we should be able to play our scene and see that the NPCs will go around these obstacles. So again, you can see they have gone around the obstacles. So again, this is working. They're all following the main character. So what I may do in a few seconds is just close this entrance right there and force the NPC to go around the obstacles, not to go through a little gap that was existing beforehand. So again, as I move them, we should be able to observe a similar result. So again, 
you can see these NPCs going around the corner and then moving toward the character. Okay, so again, uh, the system knew that uh, these objects were actually to be avoided. So this is part of the reason why we just didn't need to bake this scene again. So at this stage, uh, we know that our NPCs are working properly. What I will create is another platform, a platform on which my first person, my third person controller will jump. And the idea there is to make sure that the NPCs will also jump in order to reach the player. So again, I'm just duplicating this, this uh, platform. So I'm going to give it a different name, so ground lower, so it's going to be a lower platform. And again, I'm just going to bake this as part of the navigation and formation. And if I play the scene again, the NPCs should not be able to follow me, and I will explain why later on. So again, um, I will actually just run and jump onto the platform. Okay, so again, if I jump on the platform there, what will happen is that they will stay exactly where they are. So they will not follow me. Okay, and the part of the reason why is that these two platforms are not connected. So what we need to define really, it was is called off mesh links. In fact, you can see it in the top right corner in, in the navigation window. So there are no links between those two platforms, so the NPCs don't really know how to go from one platform to the other. So what I will do simply is to first create and generate off mesh links, and then what I will do is specify the drop height. The drop height is basically what is the maximum distance that they can actually jump I suppose or the maximum drop they can actually jump through. So again in this example you can see there is a link, a connection between those two platforms. So this is what is called the off mesh link. And as long as the, the distance between the two platforms or the drop is less than 20, then the NPC will definitely jump to go on the second platform. As you can see here as I have followed my character straight away because the jump uh, not the jump distance the drop height is actually less than 20. So once this is done, there are other options you can work with. For instance, the jump distance. In our example, um, what we will create is another platform that is basically on the same level on the y-axis, um, the same level as the second platform, the lower platform, but there will be a gap between those two. So again, we are not in the case of a drop right now, but in the case where the actual NPCs will need to jump horizontally. Okay. So in this example here, the drop height might not be uh, suitable. <coughs> and what I will need to do is to look at a feature called jump distance. So again, we will specify a maximum distance within which the NPCs will be able to jump. So for my example here, I'm going to use something like 5 meters, for instance. And then press back. So again, you can see the link has been created between those two platforms, which will make it possible for the NPCs to jump between the two platforms. So again, it's not linked to the drop, it's linked to the jump distance, okay, because we go uh, horizontally as opposed to uh, falling down. Okay, so again, in this example, my first, my third person controller will move and jump on the first platform, and the NPCs will follow this, this character. Then my character will jump onto the sec the third platform, and that should be work that should be working perfectly. So again, what I'm doing here is just to make things easier to see. I'm just going to move this third person character to the third platform and try to observe the NPCs coming onto this platform from the higher platform. Okay, so again, making sure that my third person character is above the ground. And once this is done, we could just observe the different characters 
first jumping from the higher platform and then jumping from the second to the third platform. There you go. Okay, so directly moved from the second last to the last platform. That's it guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, if you want to know more about Unity, please check the website www.learntocreategames.com. See you, bye!